Okay, so before make sure that whatever you do in the workspace, you're facing the back. How do you know if that's the case? On the little dice on your screen in the top right, it should be written back. Now create a part, change the dimensions to the following, and anchor it. Name it cam part. This will be our object to our camera that we'll focus on. Then duplicate the part and name it intro part. This is to reference the position of where our menu will be held. You can bring the cam part into the replica storage. You should also set both parts transparency to 1. Then create another part and name it play part. Add a surface GUI on it. Create a text button, you can customize it however you want. Make sure that the surface of the GUI location is set to the back of the part. You can modify those parameters in the surface GUI to make it look better. Duplicate the play part into how many buttons you want, each need a different name. Make sure that also you have one that is named boot. And group all of the buttons as a model. Now, I'm just tweaking some things to make my GUI look better. Set the root as a primary part. I'm adding R6, but of course for you, you will have a scenic environment. Bring back the menu UI in replica storage and then create a local script in the player script. First, we will need our variables. We set our player and players, just in case the camera of our player run service as we're going to modify the camp parts in the loop replica storage to bring out our menu camp part, the part that the camera will follow we immediately clone it then we parent it to workspace and set it, its position to the intro part position. We set the subject of our camera to the cam part. And the camera type to scriptable so it won't move when we right click. We add the move factor variable for when we translate the mouse position from the screen to the position of the cam part in the 3D world. Add two previous mouse positions to later know if there is any change, so if the player moves his mouse or not. And a max position which will limit on how the cam part can go to. We set the original position as an origin, which is the initial cam part position. We duplicate our UI on the workspace. No need to put it into a specific position, it will do itself later. Although, make sure to parent it to workspace. By default, our mouse isn't moving. Create 
create a function for the loop using run service. As much as I would like to explain what each line does, this will be too much yapping. So I'll just explain what I'm doing since this is more on the math learning side than the scripting side. So basically what we do is we get the screen of the player dimensions. We also get the mouse position over that screen. Now we subscribe both axes on the full screen to the mouse position to know how much pixels from the right the mouse hasn't traveled. If let's say my mouse was on the full left of the screen, the X dimension left over would be the full screen size X. We need those variables because afterwards we differentiate the half of the screen to the left over. So now we know how much our mouse has traveled from the original screen, which is the center. We then use we then using clamp translate the amount of pixels into studs that the camp part will need to move. Because if we don't do this, the camp part will literally move more than 1k studs, which is too much. So then we essentially check if our mouse has been moved or not. If it did, we modify the position that the camp part needs to move to using lerp for its way effect. If it didn't move, the target position will remain the same and the camp part will keep moving to its goal. We then apply to the target we then apply the target position to the camp part again using lerp. And now all we need to do is to do the same for the UI. Because remember, the camp part holds the camera but not the UI. The main difference in this is that I offset the UI from the current part and I add it an angle. We also move the primary part of the UI which is the root. When you try it, it should work flawlessly. Now some of you guys might ask on how to make the button work as well. Well, here's a simple script on how you can achieve that. The rest is for you to figure out. <laughs> 